In our lives, we only take a few oaths, perhaps as a scout, certainly to your spouse, maybe to your God. And for those who serve in uniform, that oath which you are about to take. It is different because in this oath, you give a public statement of commitment not to a person or a political party, but to an idea. An idea codified in the Constitution of the United States. And today you are recommitting yourself to upholding all that America stands for. It ensures that we remain true to the Constitution's fundamental purposes and guiding principles ratified by we the people. Good afternoon, everybody. Today's podcast, the scapegoat of the Afghanistan debacle and a distraction from the truth. Who is Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Scheller? The Marine calling for accountability for military leadership on the disastrous and catastrophic exit from Afghanistan. He did so knowing his, he was risking his career and would likely face punishment for doing so. He posted videos of discontent with military leadership's disastrous withdrawal out of Afghanistan that left 13 servicemen and women dead stranded thousands of U.S. citizens, and the abandonment of military equipment. But what makes Lieutenant Colonel Scheller memorable is his willingness to take responsibility for the Afghanistan fiasco like a true soldier. While on the Hill, General Miley, General McKenzie, and Defense Secretary Austin were playing the blame game. He wanted the American people to hold himself and the military leadership accountable, whereas the Biden administration was unwilling. The administration, the generals, and the Secretary of Defense preferred to blame the Trump administration. And I'm not saying we've got to be in, the, in Afghanistan forever, but I am saying, did any of you throw your rank on the table and say, hey, it's a bad idea to evacuate Bagram Airfield, the strategic air barriers, before we evacuate everyone? I have been fighting for 17 years. I am willing to throw it all away to say to my senior leaders, I demand accountability. In a CBS News editorial by David Martin and Eleanor Watson, Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Scheller, the Marine officer who went viral with his criticism of military leaders who were responsible for the pullout from Afghanistan, was scheduled to face a pretrial hearing on Thursday. But it has been postponed until Tuesday, his lawyer said. He is being held in the brig at Camp Lejeune, where the hearing was to have been held. Scheller hasn't been charged yet, but according to legal documents, he is facing potential charges of conduct unbecoming an officer, contempt towards officials, disobeying a senior officer, and failure to obey an order or regulation. Imprisoned in the brig because he asked the question millions of Americans for weeks have been seeking the answers to and the accountability for the post-haste withdrawal from Afghanistan. He dared to ask the question of his leadership, what happened and why? So damn it, maybe I should go to the brig too. Maybe all of us Americans should go to the brig because we're asking the same damn questions while these bozos up on the hill in General Milley General McKenzie and Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin are blaming Trump for the nonsense that had happened in Afghanistan. And of course, they're throwing the president, Joe Biden, who I have no favor towards either. But damn it, man, get your story straight. Because you can't use Lieutenant Colonel Scheller as your scapegoat. Of course I take responsibility. I'm president. Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Scheller went viral when he posted his first video to Facebook and LinkedIn on August 26, 2021, as the U.S. withdrawal from Afghanistan was still ongoing. In the video, Scheller leveled criticism at the senior military leaders for their handling of the final days of America's longest war, according to an article in Task and Purpose by David Rosa on September 28, 2021. Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Scheller is accused of the following of offenses under the UCMJ, Uniform Code of Military Justice. The first charge is Article 88, contempt towards officials. Then you have Article 90, willfully disobeying a superior commissioned officer. Article 92, failure to obey an order. And finally, he is charged with Article 30, uh, 133, conduct unbecoming an officer and a gentleman. These charges are severe and career-ending. 
And I find myself at odds because on the one hand, all military personnel, albeit Air Force, Army, Navy, Marines, and the Coast Guard are bound by the Uniform Code of Military Justice, which is very subjective in lieu of the fact that they supersede the constitutional rights given to all U.S. citizens. However, it should be understood the military justice is a separate entity from civilian justice. Members of the military can be tried in court-martial, military court, under the rules of the Uniform Code of Military Justice, UCMJ. The UCMJ defines crimes that are the same as those in civilian courts, such as murder, rape, and robbery, but it also includes violations of order and discipline, such as disobedience to a superior officer, drunkenness on duty, misconduct as a prisoner of war, even adultery. A brief history on the UCMJ. The UCMJ was first established in 1950 and underwent a major revision in 1968. Military law did not suddenly spring into existence in 1950, but the UCMJ was the first attempt to turn the existing law into a comprehensive code. With that said, I am at odds because General Mark Alexander Milley is subject to the same code, but worse yet, some of the transgressions are treasonable offenses. It is the opinion of online double fact check blogger, retired Staff Sergeant McGarry, that Miley, a four-star general and chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, has in the time just before President Trump's presidency, was heard speaking with subordinates with the intent of subverting the orders of the President of the United States. Also, he contacted an officer of the Chinese army and told him he would tell him if an American military action was coming against China. This, by any definition, before 2020, is treason against the United States of America, and he must be removed and charged immediately. So I have no idea what Congress is waiting for, or what the President of the United States, Joe Biden, is waiting for. The guy committed a crime, and you can't protect them. The American people are going to speak and act on this. Tensions would build up. There'd be calls going back and forth from all kinds of senior officials. I said, hell, General Lee, I'll probably give you a call, but we're not going to attack you. Trust me, we're not going to attack you. These are two great powers, and I am doing my best to transmit the president's intent, yeah. President Trump's intent, to ensure that the American people are protected from an incident that could escalate. I understand your intent, but I think you articulating that, that you would tell him, you would give him a call, I think is worthy of your resignation. Uh, I just think that's against our country, that you would give our number one adversary that information and tell him that. But let's not kid ourselves. General Mark Anthony Miley will not face any tribunal over his treasonable behavior because the Marxist-leaning Democratic Congress and the Biden administration will protect him. It was clear that Congresswoman Nancy Pelosi and General Miley were in collusion to undermine then-President Trump. And yet there is no outcry for removal or at the minimum disciplinary action for either person. In Nancy Pelosi's case, she should be censured. In the case of General Miley, he should just be removed and placed in the break. Shortly after my call ended with General Lee, I personally informed both Secretary of State Pompeo and White House Chief of Staff Meadows. The substance, Megan, this is what you got to. And what I saw some of the questions about yesterday, if he in fact said, we will not attack you until we warn you, that's that's just nutty, right? That's just you would remember uh, that. I, 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 it's it's certain that he did not tell Chief Meadows or I that because um, I, I don't know if he told us. He thinks he told us at the same on the same phone call. But I can promise you that Chief Meadows would have called me immediately. Said, "Hey, we we had a real problem here, and if I'd have heard it, um, I would have I would have gone high and right." Even his testimony implicated the general when questioned in the House Armed Services Committee hearing on Afghanistan on September twenty eighth, two thousand twenty one. Meanwhile, Lieutenant Scheller was arrested and remanded to the brig for being outspoken about the withdrawal out of Afghanistan, in which U.S. civilians, Afghan supporters, and over $85 million worth of military equipment was abandoned and uh, the deaths of 13 service men and women. Worst of all, General Miley bragged about his behavior in an upcoming book, According to an article on Powerline on September 15, 2021, Bob Woodward alleges in a forthcoming book that General Mark Miley conspired with senior military officers of the Chinese Communist Party against his boss, President Donald Trump. Yesterday, 
I expressed skepticism that any American military officer would do such a dishonorable thing while noting that Miley had not yet disputed Woodward's charges. Now, based on this statement by Joint Staff Spokesperson Colonel Dave Butler, it appears that Woodward's reporting is shockingly accurate. Colonel Butler's statement was issued in response to Woodward's report and the firestorm of controversy that it ignited. Thus, the most significant fact about the statement is that it does not deny the truth of any part of Woodward's account. So, Miley did talk with his Chinese counterparts at the time alleged by Woodward. His only defense is that those conversations were normal. They conveyed reassurance. Well, that is what Woodward wrote. Miley told the, com the communist Chinese that if President Trump intended to launch an attack against them, he, General Miley, would betray his country by giving them advance warning. No doubt that was reassuring the Chinese Communist Party. Sounds like treason to me. So what is treason? According to the American Heritage Dictionary, treason is the betrayal of allegiance towards one's own country, especially by committing hostile acts against it or aiding its enemies in committing such acts. The betrayal of someone's trust or confidence, a betraying, treachery, breach of faith, very similar to the story of Benedict Arnold who schemed to surrender the fortress at West Point, New York to the British. But it was exposed in September 1780 when Patriot Militia captured Andre carrying papers that revealed the plot. Arnold escaped, Andre was hanged. General Miley is escaping while the scapegoat Lieutenant Colonel Scheller is being hanged. How ironic. History always repeats itself. I quote author Nathaniel Philbrick, Without the discovery of his treason in the fall of 1780, the American people might not ever have been forced to realize that the real threat to their liberties came not from without, but from within. My conclusion is the scapegoating of Lieutenant Colonel Scheller is a distraction from the truth of the true criminal wearing four stars as a Joint Chiefs of Staff at the Pentagon and military advisor to the President of the United States. Don't let the uniform fool you. Traitors can wear them well. I wonder if the General recalls every military service member takes an oath confirmed in the article by Rod Powers, who was the U.S. military expert for the balanced careers and was a retired Air Force First Sergeant with 22 years of active duty service. Raise your right hand and repeat after me. Aye. State your full name. Aye. Rowan Crow. Aye. Kate Pollock. Aye. Jacob Hughes. Do solemnly swear or affirm. Solemnly swear. swear. That I will support and defend. I will support, support and defend. defend. The Constitution of the United States. The Constitution of the United States. Against all enemies. Against all enemies. Foreign and domestic. Foreign and domestic. That I will bear true faith. I will bear true faith. And allegiance. And allegiance. To the same. To the same. And I will obey the orders. And I will obey the orders. Of the President. President. of the United States, of the United States, and the orders, and the orders of the officers, of the officers appointed over me, appointed over me, according to, according to regulations, regulations, and the uniform code, and the uniform code of military justice, of military justice. So help me God. So help me God. Our military oath taken at the time of induction into the military is as follows. I, and you submit your name when you say the next few lines do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic, that I will bear true faith and allegiance to the same, and that I will obey the orders of the President of the United States and the orders of the officers appointed over me, according to the regulations and the Uniform Code of Military Justice, so help me God. So this is the same oath that Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Scheller and General Mark Anthony Milley took. But ask yourself, who violated this oath? Was it Lieutenant Colonel Scheller or was it General Milley? They believe they can lie to the American people so much and that the American people will take it. And if they keep saying it over and over and over again, that the American people will then believe it. And that is where we have a huge issue with this. I mean, you've got a general, you've got a joint chief admitted 
to uh, to treason, to, to, to collusion with the Chinese government uh, without having the president's authority under the Trump administration. And I don't understand how he's not in prison, right. not in the brig. And you've got Lieutenant Colonel Scheller in the, in the brig. It doesn't make sense. Rod Powers goes on to say, notice the oath states, I will obey the orders of the president of the United States, but the Uniform Code of Military Justice UCMJ Article 90 states that military personnel need to obey the lawful orders of his or her superior. The duty and obligation to obey lawful orders creates no gray area for discussion. But does the military member have a duty to disobey unlawful orders, including orders of senior officers, Secretary of Defense, and even the President of the United States? The UCMJ protects the soldier in this situation as he or she has a moral and legal obligation to the Constitution and not to obey unlawful orders and the people who issue them. These have, these have to be strong examples of a direct violation of the Constitution and the UCMJ and not the, mil the military members' own opinions. It is important to note, military discipline and effectiveness are built on the on a foundation of obedience to orders. And I understand that. Recruits are taught to obey orders from their superiors immediately and without question, right from day one of boot camp. However, do service members who have taken an oath under acts of treason, under unlawful orders, what are they supposed to do? Are they supposed to continue to obey them? Or do they resist, report, just like Lieutenant Colonel Shelley? Now, he didn't report actual treasonous behavior, but he asked questions with respect to the method that we were withdrawing out of Afghanistan. And I don't have to reiterate the U.S. civilians that are stranded there, the over, eight, the over $85 million worth of equipment that is now in the hands of the Taliban and being sold to Iran. I don't have to reiterate that because that's happening right now. And our allies are being butchered by the same weapons that we left behind. And who's gonna answer to those issues? Who's accountable? No one has to look any further than General Mark Anthony Milley. Of course I take responsibility, I'm president. There is a growing trend in the United States in which companies like Facebook, the government, and social media cancel culture are electing to silence the truth or provide an alternative version of it. The problem is the aforementioned have bought into the lies about the multiple crises the Biden administration has permitted to develop into full chaotic disasters. The story of Lieutenant Colonel Scheller sounds like the same storyline of both Julian Assange and Edward Snowden, except the Lieutenant Colonel didn't reveal any secrets. He just spoke his mind concerning the withdrawal from Afghanistan. Should he be in a brig in solitary confinement while General Miley speaks to reporters about how he colluded to undermine the nation with China or his reporting to Nancy Pelosi of the mental aptitude of then President Trump? Nancy Pelosi in a written letter to the Democratic Party stated the following, this morning I spoke to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff Mark Miley to discuss available precautions for preventing an unstable president from initiating military hostilities or accessing the launch codes and ordering a nuclear strike, Pelosi wrote in the letter. The situation of this unhinged president could not be more dangerous and we must do everything that we can to protect the American people from his unbalanced assault on our country and our democracy. Well, what about her unbalanced assault? on democracy, on the nation. She's unhinged, if anybody else. There is quite a bit of information to analyze and digest before drawing a conclusion, I will admit. However, there is a difference between speaking your mind about the leadership versus colluding to undermine the commander-in-chief. Which, which one of these acts is a treasonable uh, offense? I say General Miley shouldn't just resign, but be prosecuted under the same uniform code of military justice, just like Lieutenant Scheller. 
both to some extent have committed violations of the code of conduct of the Uniform Code of Military Justice, but only one betrayed then-President Donald Trump and the nation. For the last 30 days, our son has spoke his truth. And he is a very uh, proud American, a very proud Marine, a very principled man, and he stood his ground, and that's what the Marines have taught him. He only spoke because what he saw happening in Kabul was, it, he couldn't take it. it. He had to speak out. He had to stand his ground. Folks, as I bring this podcast to an end, I ask you to look at the evidence. Lieutenant Colonel Scheller basically voiced what everyone in our nation had been asking questions about, this post-haste exit out of Afghanistan. In addition, he brought to light the fact that we still have U.S. civilians stranded, held hostage in Afghanistan by the Taliban. And the Biden administration continues to use diplomacy to deal with terrorists. And not only that, the $85 million worth of military equipment is being used to butcher the citizens of that country, the allies. And we're sitting here doing nothing. So I plead with you, take the opportunity now to write to your congressperson and let them know that we need to get Lieutenant Colonel Scheller out of the break. We need to get him in front of a congressional hearing so we can find out firsthand what it was that took place and what he saw. There's nothing top secret about that. I took the opportunity today to write to my congresswoman of my district, pleading with her to review the, the Lieutenant Colonel Scheller case and have him released, at least, you know, prior to him going to trial. I mean, he deserves that much, but being isolated is just the military's way of closing him out to the public, closing him out to the press, because they don't know what to do with him because he's going to be a very outspoken witness as to this disastrous exit out of Afghanistan. He's going to basically implicate General Mark Shelley, General McKenzie, Secretary of Defense, Lloyd Austin, and the Biden administration. So I, you know, as I bring this to a close, what do I always tell you, America? Wake up, wake up.